Hey everybody, Ray here. Today we're going to talk about all things Zhao and I hope it will help you choose where to spend your primos this patch. Don't forget to check out my Shenhe video and I'll feature Ganyu very very soon. Before we hop on in, please let me know if you like these videos by hitting that like button and if you've not joined the team yet then check out the subscribe button. If there's a character you think I should cover next, let me know in the comments. And if you want to talk all things Genshin, you can come join in on my Discord server too. The link's in the description. Zhao is one of Liu Wei's Adepti, and to be a little more specific, one of the five Yaksha dispatched by the Geo Archon to fight off demons. Zhao's history is dark and has left him a little disturbed. Zhao is known as the Vigilant Yaksha as he is always, and I mean literally always, ready to fulfil his contract and protect Liu Wei. Before we talk about what Zhao can do, I'm going to show you my build. Maybe I should put a content warning here though because it's a bit of a disaster mess. I've unlocked all of his ascension levels, maxed out his friendship, and he's currently level 80, but I do think I'm going to level 90 him in future. I don't have any constellations for Zhao, but after ranking my characters on their average talent levels, I knew I needed to put in the work, and all of his talent levels are now level 9. I do have two crowns available too, and Zhao is a candidate for at least one of them. My Zhao is currently paired with the Lithic Spear, so the more Liyue teammates, the higher his attack and crit rate boost. I'm not that jazzed about it as it hinges on his teammates to get those boosts and I do have the Staff of Homer but I currently have that on Zhongli. For weapon, Zhao really gets the short end of the stick as it's kind of difficult to get a really good free to play friendly polearm for him. Literally right after filming this I got a Calamity Quella. I was hoping for the Primordial Jade Winged Spear for Zhao instead but oh well I'll test that on him anyway. When it comes to artifacts that's where it gets really messy. I'm running a 4 piece gladiators finale because I can never get anything good from the viridescent set so I've fully given up on that. So aside from his artifacts with a fixed stat there's an attack percent sans, an animo damage goblet and an attack percent circlet. I did actually upgrade these a bit while filming but every single one needs to be better. They're a bit naff really aren't they? So if you've been thinking of adding Zhao to your team it's time to stock up on animo crystals from the bosses, juvenile jade from the primordial geo bishop, scale the highest peaks of Liyue for Qingxing flowers and gather up some slimes. For his talents you'll need books of prosperity, more slimes and shadow of the warrior from battling the harbinger Tartalia. Once you've added Zhao to your team any more wishes returning the same character will give you Stella Fortuna to light up his constellation Alatus Nemesios. Alatus Nemesios translates to winged nemesis and I'm going to show you why just hang in there. Zhao's basic attack whirlwind thrust performs up to six consecutive spear strikes. For a polearm user, Zhao has a unique charge attack described as an upward thrust, which of course consumes stamina, and when plunging from midair, deals AoE damage upon impact with the ground. Zhao will not take any damage from a plunging attack no matter how high he falls from. Here's a side by side with Kudro Sara who has a similar HP, and from the height of the Jade Chamber, Sara takes damage while Zhao is unscathed. When performing his elemental skill, Lemnostatic Wind Cycling, Zhao lunges forward dealing animo damage to opponents in his path. He can also use this skill in midair and it starts off with two charges. For his second passive talent, Dissolution Eon Heavenfall, using Lemnostatic Wind Cycling increases the damage of subsequent uses of the skill by 15%. The effect lasts for 7 seconds and has a maximum of 3 stacks. Gaining a new stack refreshes the effect's duration. The first constellation, Dissolution Eon Destroyer of Worlds, grants the skill one extra charge, while the third constellation, Conqueror of Evil Wrath Deity, increases the level of this skill by 3 talent levels. For the elemental burst, Bane of All Evil, Zhao dons the Yaksha Mask that set gods and demons trembling millennia ago. The Yaksha Mask greatly increases Zhao's jumping ability, converts his attack to animo damage, which cannot be overridden by other elements, and increases his damage in AoE. In this state, Zhao will continuously lose HP. The effects will end when Zhao falls or leaves the field. After unlocking the first passive talent, Conqueror of Evil, Tamer of Demons, while under the effects of Bane of All Evil, all damage dealt by Zhao increases by 5%. Damage increases by a further 5% every 3 seconds the ability persists, with a maximum damage bonus of 25%. The fifth constellation, Evolution Eon, Origin of Ignorance, increases the level of Bane of All Evil by 3 talent levels. And the final constellation, Conqueror of Evil, Guardian Yaksha, while under the effects of Bane of All Evil, hitting at least two opponents with Zhao's plunging attack will immediately grant him one charge of Lemnostatic Wind Cycling, and for the next second he may use it while ignoring its cooldown. His final passive talent, Transcension Gravity Defier, decreases climbing stamina consumption for your own party members by 
but it's not going to be stackable with any future characters who have the same benefit. When in the party and not on the field, Zhao's second constellation, Annihilation Eon Blossom of Kaleidos, increases his energy recharge by 25%. And his fourth constellation, Transcension Extinction of Suffering, grants Zhao a 100% defense boost when his HP falls below 50%. And when he cooks the attack boost in dish almond tofu, there's a chance he'll create his signature dish, Sweet Dream, instead. And that dish will grant a greater attack boost than the original product. So, let's talk team comps. I know I usually start with resonance, but we'll come to that in a bit instead. And we're going to talk everything from free-to-play friendly to 5-star today. Personally, I feel like you should run Zhao with a dedicated healer. Not just someone who can heal, but a healer healer, like Barbara, Diona, Chi Chi, or Kakomi. For a 4 star, Diona is my top choice as her burst not only heals, but applies cryo, debuffs enemies, and if you have all her constellations can buff incoming healing or elemental mastery. Her shield can also increase movement speed. If you've managed to snap up Kokomi, with a good build she can be a formidable burst DPS, while healing Zhao or while his burst is on cooldown. And her elemental skill will apply hydro while healing, so pair well with his burst. Now let's talk resonance and healers. There are two Animo healers in the roster at the moment, Sayu and Jean, who I still don't have, not bitter at all. Using either of those two will trigger the Animo Resonance Impetuous Winds, which decreases stamina consumption by 15%, increases movement speed by 10%, and shortens skill cooldown by 5%. If you have either of those two characters and want to free up other spots in your team for other elements, they are solid choices. But for triggering the Resonance and helping with your team's energy, Sucrose makes a great choice. She offers a little crowd control to group enemies up and is very helpful with energy recharge. But if you are super new and haven't picked up many characters yet, you'll always have the Traveller. After healers, my favourite type of character to pair with Zhao is someone with a DOT ability or damage over time. This will give some extra elemental reaction damage too. I've already mentioned Diona and Kokomi who fit this bill, and Sucrose and Sayu too. For elemental skills, think Mona's Taunt skill, Fischl and Zhongling's Familiars, and Shogun's Judgment. For Burst, there's Rosaria and Lisa, but if you also go for multiple characters this patch, Shenhe and Ganyu. And finally, of course, characters whose skills can buff the party or debuff the enemy, like Bennett's Attack Boost, Kujo Sara's Attack Boost, Zhongli's Resistance Shred, and have I mentioned buffs and debuffs Diona can bring to the team yet? So when it comes to my final thoughts on Zhao, I seriously don't make enough use of him, but I think primarily that's because I haven't had the resources to invest in him and his team yet. In earlier stages of the Abyss, even with a lackluster build that I have, he is formidable, but personally I'm not that great at managing his HP sacrifice. That is just a me problem though, because I'm just not skilled enough to be a Zhao main. Although whenever I do bust him out as the lead on my team, it's a nice change of pace as his playstyle is pretty different to the other characters. He's also great to have in the party for exploring, to get extra climbing stamina, and it is kind of fun to just fling yourself off of high cliffs and take no damage. Anybody else? Just me? Okay. Well, that's all we have to talk about today. I hope you found the video helpful in making your choice on who to wish for this patch. Stay tuned as the Ganyu video is in the works and will be here soon. The question of today's video is, who are you wishing for this patch? Are you wishing for Zhao? Did you choose Shenhe instead? Or are you waiting for the next round with Ganyu and Zhongli? I personally went for Shenhe as I had the other three already from their previous banners. But maybe you're not wishing in 2.4 at all because you're waiting on someone else. Let me know who in the comments. But for now, I'll see you next time. I deal in death. If you cannot bring yourself to kill, speak my name. <laughs>